Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I have a huge, and I mean huge, book haul. I went to RT this past month up in Dallas and I got a lot of free books and then I bought a lot of books. So I know this video is going to be a hundred years long so I'm going to go ahead and jump straight on into it in no particular order. This first one is called Lizzie and Jane by Catherine Relay. Rie. Rie. This first one is called Lizzie and Jane by Catherine Rie. I am going to butcher names throughout this, so apologies in advance, but this book is kind of a play on like the modern day um, Pride and Prejudice, but cooking is involved. And I thought, I don't know, it just sounds really fun. It sounds like a good TV movie, if that makes any sense. And like, I eat that kind of thing up, and I haven't really read that type of thing in book form, but I'm excited about this. A Sparrow in Trezine by Christy Kem Cambron. Bound together across time, two women will discover a powerful connection through one survivor's story of hope in the darkest days of a war-torn world. I really love the cover to this. It's just really cool. And then if you look closely, like the wires overlap the letters, and I just, I dig that. Uh, and this is Center of Gravity by Laura McNeil. And this is supposed to be a thriller, and I'm really excited about that. I'm trying to get into thrillers because that's like my favorite kind of movie, one of my favorites at least. So I don't haven't really read much of it in book form, so I'm definitely going to try to do this. This one I think is a YA book, but I'm going to try to give it a chance even though YA is really not my cup of tea. Uh, and it is called Reawakened by Colleen Hook. And her name sounds really familiar, so I feel like she's pretty popular. This book haul is a lot of me giving chances to like different genres that I don't typically read, so hopefully I'll get into some of this. I really find the cover to this one very interesting, and it is called The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adin? Adin? Adin. This looks like a kind of fantasy um, slash history. I think this is YA. I'm pretty sure this is YA. If you follow me on social media, you all know what this book is because I've talked about it a lot, mostly on Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Hannah Stories with two S's, like, because there's no apostrophe. Anyway, and it is Marrow by Taryn Fisher. I cannot tell you how excited I was to go ahead and grab this. To Like, I went ahead and did it. But Murphy Ray was at RT and then she snapped a photo of herself on Instagram and was just like, hey, if you can like find out where this is, like come and I have an extra copy because she did the cover design for this. Her cover design thing is Indie Solutions by Murphy Ray, Ray with an E. And I, I really love this and the back is also beautiful too. And I'm just, I'm such a huge fan and oh my god, there's a, okay, no spoiling, but I was really, really, really excited to get this. I want all of Taryn's books in physical copy. Oh, this one I didn't get from RT. I got it at Target last night, like I need more books. Um, and I, I got it because of so many people recommending it to me and saying, if you've read Gone Girl, you'll love this. And I'm halfway through Gone Girl and I am loving it. I don't know why I put it down. I think I was in the mood for something happy or something. And it is called The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And this is supposed to be a thriller. If you can see a theme here, I'm really trying to get into thrillers. And this book always looked interesting to me, but then I had it like directly... Uh, recommended multiple times so I'm like nope that's it I'm getting it now this next one I I made a dear friend at RT and that being said I still am going to give these books honest reviews but it's just really exciting when you you know make new friends and stuff and so I got all these copies and these books seem really right up my alley as far as like television wise I don't I like I said before I don't always watch the same kind of things that I read but I'm gonna try to get into that hence why I have a lot of like thriller action more like I don't know why I make kissy noises with a punch hand. What? And it is called uh, Chasing Rhodes by Angela. And Hannah Rhodes has just gotten out of a long-term relationship and she isn't looking for a new man in her life. But after a night out with the girls and one too many tequila shots, her plans to, save, to stay man-free are blown all to hell. She finds herself in bed with a smoldering stranger from a party at six months back and immediately knows she's in trouble, big trouble. And the last thing Hannah needs is more trouble. Her last relationship took her out like an emotional freight train and she's trying to piece back the stability of her life that her life once had. Grayson Holt's biggest fear in life is to end up like his father, like the man who left him as a child and broke his mother's heart. He vowed to never be responsible for that kind of carnage. Men could be cruel and that kind of brutality was in his blood. He never allowed himself to get too close to anyone until he met Hannah. Something about her makes him want to try, but a man can't change overnight. Will Holt be able to catch Rhodes every time he lets her go, or will their chase end in heartbreak? I'm excited about this. I really am, and they're not big books, and I'm going to go on to the rest of the series as well. And the second one of the series is Choosing Henley. I don't know if I should read the back, because I don't know if they tie together. I should just ask her, shouldn't I? I don't think they necessarily tie together, but they might be like cameo style. And I don't know, I kind of I, I dig it. And let me say, the cover model for this I actually think is really good looking, which I don't find to be the case in most books. And this, ooh, this is a cool one. This one is called uh, Breaking Bennett 
Yes, Breaking Bennett. I really like the name Bennett. And this last one is called Keeping It King. Oh, the back of it is really cool because obviously tattoos and then it has like the little ink pot and then the needle. Back cover stuff, I dig it. Got a lot more books to go through, but I'm excited about these. They're by Angela Lynn. The next few of these are just, they're hilarious. I'm sorry if this makes me a horribly mean person, but it seems so ridiculous that it makes me want to read it though, which is I guess a good thing, right? I'm, I'm not trying to be cruel here, but it's called Reigning Injustice. Yes, that is a cowboy holding a baby. Wait till I read the back. Frantic 911 call sends streamers. <laughs> a frantic 911 call sends Sweetwater Spring deputy Reed Cald Caldwell uh, racing home to his ex-wife. But the kidnappers didn't come for Addison. Their target was their two-month-old adopted daughter. Except she isn't adopted. <laughs> and Reed is the father. <laughs> I like how he just told me all that on the back summary. Now he has to grapple with the shock of sudden parenthood while finding a safe haven for Addison and their baby girl. With desire reigning and threats against the mother and child escalating, the Texas lawman will do whatever it takes to protect the woman he loves and the child who needs them both. It's not written poorly, it's just so... <laughs> it's, it's so TV movie, but I'm actually going to read it. Megan and I both are. Uh, Megan Simpson from I Read Like a Boss, just because it seems really funny. <laughs> And these next two I'm going to go through kind of quickly just because I think they're like first chapters of a bunch of books. I don't know what to call that. So uh, look inside for a sneak peek of four upcoming collector's edition books featuring bull rider heroes. I'm not into bull riders, but that's what they are. I mean, we were in Texas. I expected to get bull rider books. Oh, okay. I have two copies of this in here because that was an oops moment for me. Um... But it is Wicked Lovely by Melissa Marr. I don't think I reviewed this on my channel, but it was one of the first books that I read after Twilight. I had a friend in high school recommend it to me, and she, like, gave me the book. I have, this is, like, my, I have three copies of this book now. But I love this book so much, and it is about uh, fairies, but in this really dark sense. And there are, like, these different courts, and the fairies are kind of, like, in this unseen world living amongst us, but no one can see them. But then the protagonist, Aslan, she can see them. And it's because, like, she has kind of, like, this generational gift curse thing. And, yeah, then stuff happens. But it's, like, fairies in a really, really dark sense. And that's what I liked about it. Because if you ever said fairy to me, I'd be like, no, thank you. But I really, really liked this. Oh, I recognize her. Okay, this is Sleep No More by April and Pike. I read Wings by her. And I remember liking it at the time. I was at a much younger age, and so... I feel like my tastes have changed significantly, but I'm assuming this is a YA, uh, and it says, Oracles see the future. They are never supposed to interfere. Charlotte learns that the hard way. If she hadn't tried to change one of her childhood visions, her father would still be alive. That's all I'm going to read from the back of that because it's long, but uh, it seems interesting. I Actually, my first book sounded a little bit like that. This book is so beautiful. I'm in love with the cover for this, and it's called The Last Time We Said Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. And then the front, it says, You never know when it's going to be dot dot dot. I don't remember the rest of the dance. It's all gone with other insignificant passing seconds of my life. I didn't know that to savor that moment on the dance floor, to understand how beautiful and rare it was, how fragile, how ethereal, when Tyler was happy, when we were all happy, when we were together and we were safe. I didn't know. I didn't know. I tend to like, I think this is, it's by Harper Team, so I, it's probably YA. But I tend to find any YA that I do like, it's more of the somber and it's dealing with death and like deeper, darker things. Because they feel like, I don't know, it's more honest. I'm very over the dystopian thing. I have to really be in a mood for it, which is a very rare thing. But this looks really good and I also just love the cover so much. The thriller theme, you guys. This is Bone ne Bones Never Lie by Kathy Reach. Reach is... Reach? Go me. Pronunciations. I see a PD cold case and... Oh shit, this is Bones! Temperance, oh that's so crazy! Really? There's no way. I didn't actually know it was based off a book Anne had to tell me. Now this next one is called After I'm Gone by Laura Lipton. Why does that name sound really familiar? I feel like she wrote something I'm familiar with. Uh, the back says, dead is dead, gone is gone. Ooh, there's a husband and there's jail and it's in 19 or 1976. And then the 26 years later thing. Ooh, this sounds really interesting. Murder mystery, hell yeah. Something else about me. I love those. I am addicted to lifetime murder mystery movies. No matter how cheesy, I find some weird comfort in that. Is that strange? I shouldn't be comforted by murder mysteries. And this one is called A Promise Kept by Robin Lee Hatcher. Oh, it's religion. Oh, 
I might give this one to my mom. I'm not really into religious books. It says, God was going to save her marriage. Allison was sure of it. What had become of his promise? I might give this to my mom. She, this is more her cup of tea. This is one I'm thinking of giving to my mother too, but I haven't decided. I might give it a shot. This is called what, On Shifting Sand by Allison Pittman. And it is about the time in the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. Yeah, that was like a really brief summary, but that's what it's about from what I gathered. This one I've heard a lot about, but not actually what it is about. I've just heard it talked about. That was an awesome summary right there. Um, it is called The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torre. Allison Torre? Alexandra Torre. I definitely know this. Uh, the back says, my life is simple as long as I follow the rules. One, don't leave the apartment. Two, never let anyone in. Three, don't kill anyone. I've obeyed these rules for three years, but rules were meant to be broken. This one I'm really excited about, and Vanessa, I can't remember your last name, you're, you were a subscriber and we talked to Vanessa, um, she recommended this to me, I think through someone. Anyway, she heard a lot of hype and so I was like, yes, must get, and it is called The Life Intended by Kristen Harmel. 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 <laughs> I just repeat things three times until I hope that it sounds right. Finding love once is a gift, finding it twice. Young widow Kate Win- wait, 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 understands just how lucky that is. A music therapist in New York City, Kate is newly engaged to a handsome, successful man. Life should be just about perfect, except that suddenly Kate is having unsettling dreams about her first husband. In those dreams, Patrick didn't die the terrible night 12 years ago, and he and Kate had a daughter, Hannah. Oh, hey, it's felt my, my way too. Uh, the feelings and images are so vivid, so right, that Kate doesn't know what to think. Is Patrick trying to tell her something, or is she just afraid to grasp his second chance, this second chance at happiness? Yes, and I also love the out of focusness on this cover. I'm just gonna blather about covers. I love some of these covers. This one I picked up specifically for a giveaway because I have a review on this book and it's a really fun series from what I've read. I only got two books in and then I felt overwhelmed because more books kept coming out and I'm like, there's no way I can keep up. Uh, and it is called If I Were You by Lisa Renee Jones. I, again, will have my review linked down there in the description and if I don't, it's really easy to find. You just type in my channel and yeah, you'll find it. This is said to be the style of Fifty Shades of Grey, and I disagree so strong. That's what made me pick it up in the first place. I don't think it's anything like Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't really know where they came up with that at all. It's more of a lighter mystery romance thing. What happens is she finds uh, this girl's journal. I don't remember where it was. Maybe her apartment or new place she works. And she ends up trying to figure out what happened to this girl because the, the entries just stopped. And so then she goes and she applies at the place that she worked for, which is at this art gallery, and she's trying to like uncover clues and whatnot. So that's what this is about. So it's like a romance mystery. And like these journals have like really, really like hot steamy kind of entries in them as well. So I don't know. It was just a really interesting book. I haven't seen many books like it, so I liked it. Does this count? Because it's an ebook. <laughs> Um, Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. I also have another, like, physical copy of this. I don't know why I grabbed two. They must have been in one of my bags. This one I hate the cover to, but it sounded interesting when the writer or the author told me about it. Uh, and it is called The Curiosity's Keeper by Sarah Ladd. Ladd. Sa Sarah E. Ladd. It is not just a ruby, as you say. It is a large quail's egg, still untouched and unpolished, and it is rumored to either bless or curse whomever, possess whomever pos possesses it. So someone caught an egg. I have no idea, but it sounds like the wording was very nice. So going for it. I'm pretty sure this is one of those um, just like fictional historical deals. This one I got from the Atria party. I remember specifically because I thought it was a really pretty orange color. And it is Things You Won't Say by Sarah Pe 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 Pecane. But I actually really do like the orange on this cover. I think it's nice. Okay, so her husband is a police officer. Ooh, shit happens. That's all I'm gonna say, because I feel like I just spoiled myself by reading it. He's a cop and shit happens. <laughs> this one I was really excited about, and thank you, Colleen, if you watch these. Probably not, but sometimes you do. Um, I got Never Never Part 2 by Colleen Hoover and Taryn Fisher. I am almost halfway through the first one, and so I'm really, really excited to get to the second one, because I know that the first one ends in a cliffhanger. Please don't spoil me. But yeah, so I'm almost done with the first one, so I'm really excited to get to this. Now this next one was like a big deal, like lots of people were excited for it. And it is called The Bourbon Kings by J.R. Ward. Oh, you can't see it. Welcome to the upstairs downstairs world of southern money and privilege, where power and passion rule and a dark family secrets never stay buried. Can you see the theme here? But this book is like massive, but I have a really good feeling about it with the kind of hype that I heard surrounding this. Like, yeah, I'm excited. 
This one is called His Kind of Trouble by Terry L. Austin. I actually liked the first cover much better. It had a woman on it, but I don't want to like rip off the paper just because. And I can't read the summary because it's taped on, so you, uh, good reads, this one. I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. This one is Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren. I love these two to death. They're like some of the sweetest people I have ever met ever. And I have a lot of like high hype <laughs> around this book. And I really want to pick up Beautiful Player. I don't remember if I did or not. We'll find out. I don't know if this is the whole book or not, but I really dig the cover to this. And it is called If Only You Knew by Kristen... Kristan, Kristan Higgins. Don't know what it's about, and the writing's really small, and I can't see that. This one I picked up, and I have a certain someone in mind that I'm going to give this to, and I hope that they don't watch my videos, but this one is uh, The Closer You Come by Gina Showalter. And I know that this certain someone is a big Gina Showalter fan. She is gorgeous, by the way, like, damn. This one seems like very CSI Miami, uh, and it is called The Cursed by Heather Graham. This one I was really excited about meeting the author Charlene Harris, and I picked up Dead to the World because I knew it would be probably my favorite based on what everyone has said because I'm already a big Eric fan from the show and then from the books as well from where I've, you know, encountered him. So I picked up the fourth one anticipating that I will love it. And I also have a hard copy of Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. I'm a very big Lauren Oliver fan and I got Delirium Sign too, but I'm not including it because I didn't technically buy it. But yeah, it was my old abused copy from high school that I loved so dearly. I just, I have this really great appreciation for Lauren Oliver now. I went to a couple panels and her and I, like, have a lot of same political-ish standpoints, like from what I've gathered from it, and a lot of the same fem feminist sam uh, standpoints. And yeah, I just, I really admire her as a person and a writer more, especially now that she gave, like, a more in-depth explanation of, like, certain things in her writing that I won't say for spoiler reasons. But yeah, so I'm, yeah, very, very big fan of, like, her as a person as well. And then I picked up a second copy of this, but that one is for a gift. This one, I think, is New Adult, and it is called Deeper by Robin York. Oh, this is, like, one of those real-life ones. Shit, okay, so, um, nude pictures are sent, shit happens, and yeah, shit happens. That's all I'm gonna go into this, just because this is a really long summary, and I don't feel like reading it all. And then I got uh, Dirty and Deeper, eh, Dirty Deeper by Megan Hartstein because they're two of my all-time just favorite books. I love them so much. This one I think is such a sweet cover and I normally think these kind of things are sort of cheesy but for some reason I just, I dig it. Um, and it is called How to Love by Katie Katungo. Ka Ka Katungo. That's what I'm going with. It's supposed to be a vibrant sparkling narrative of first love and second chances. It seems sweet and just the design of it all, like the little flowers is very delicate and cute and I just I think it looks nice. Ooh, another Charlene Harris, I forgot about this one. This is her newer one and the cover like weirds me out because it like draws you in and sucks and it's weird. Not sucks, never mind. Oh, apparently it captures the magic and the world of Bon Temps from Louisiana, so. I'm excited about that. I love those books. I love the TV show so much too. Say books, I've read like one and a half. Anyway, moving on. I picked up The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot because you're able to pick up two in the YA section and I knew that I loved the movie and it brought me back and so I thought, hey, if I'm ever feeling like a YA day and I kind of like know where it's gonna go so I'm not gonna be like sucked in where I don't know, this would be a good thing to read during finals week because I know how it ends. This one is one of those where it has a bunch of different chapter or uh, books in it. It's called Between the Covers Volume 2 and there is uh, there are authors like Cor Cora Carmack, Noelle August, Nicole Chase, Jake Crownover, Megan Erickson, Sophie Jordan, Jay Lynn, and Casey Quinn. This one is called Top 10 Clues You're Clueless by Liz Sukas. That's what I'm going with. Don't really know what this is about. It definitely feels very YA and comedy list-ish. Yeah, there's lots of lists in here, so. This. Oh, I'm so excited about picking this one up. I even purchased this one. That was my level of excitement. I picked up Bad Romeo by Lisa Raven. I really, like, I dig the cover, even though it's, again, not a thing I would typically dig. While performing the greatest love story of all time, they discovered one of their own. Oh. Typically, like, I don't, I really don't like Romeo and Juliet. The people who read it as a romance, I think, is a big reason why society is so messed up, because we're taught that at a young age that that's a romance, and I'm like, that's not a romance, you guys. It's not. That is a horrible, stupid, foolish tragedy. That's what it is, which people seem to forget. So, you know, I hope they don't make the same stupid Romeo and Juliet mistake. <laughs> But I've heard a lot of really great things, so I'm really excited about it. Gotta think of a new word for excited. Hey, guess what? I wasn't wrong. I do have this. I picked up Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. This is Megan's favorite, my roommate Megan, like I mentioned before. The back says, a bombshell, bookworm, a chronic Casanova, and a lesson in chemistry, too scandalous for school. I just love that they're very, like, 
I can't stop with that hand. Very like quick and witty and I'm, I'm excited for a good comedy. The Secret Diamond Sisters by Michelle Maddow. Uh, three sisters, one billionaire father, what could go wrong? I don't know if I'll like this one. I might just give this to a friend. This seems a little too YA for me. But hey, maybe it's your cup of tea. I don't know. Hey, the other copy of Wicked Lovely. I bumped stuff. Oops. Oh, this is a really, really big one. I, again, kind of dig this cover. It's kind of looks like a person now when on, like, it's on camera. Uh, and it is called Bonds of Trust and Bonds of Need by Linda Aker. Attending new members night at the new, at the den. <laughs> Sounds, oh. Most exclusive sex club in town. Perhaps here she can meet a man who understands her desire to be dominated. <laughs> okay, so that's what that is. Now I know. And that's a, a big book. Oh, okay. There are totally two books in this. That makes sense. So the first one is Bonds of Trust, Bonds of... D uh, now it makes sense why it's so big. Love Arrives in Pieces by Betsy St. Ar Armand? Armand? This one seemed really, really sweet. I'm pretty sure we heard the author read a little bit from it. Is this about God again? I don't know. I think I was so sold by the cover that I didn't even read the back. Yeah, that happens to the best of us. Yeah, this is a Christian fiction... <laughs> that rhymes. That's funny. I might, I might give this to my mother as well. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like to read about it. But I do love that cover though. That's a pretty cover. Loving Dallas. How appropriate that it was held in Dallas. I'm just reaching. Uh, by Casey Quinn. Ooh, that's why I've heard of her name. Oh, this is the second one. Not reading the back. Have to pick up the first one first. I'll go ahead and get that on my Kindle. The Distance Between Us by Casey West or Cassie. Cassie Casey. Money can't buy a good first impression. 17 year old Cameron Myers learned early that the rich are not to be trusted. I'm getting worse and worse at reading the backs of things and my tongue keeps getting twistier, tidier, tight. Proving my point. Don't trust rich people. Oh my God. <gasps> Don't trust rich people. That's what I got from this, but it seems really cute and I don't know. I think it'll be like a good fun read. And then I picked up Wallbanger by Alice Clayton. I haven't read any of her stuff, but I've met her twice now and her personality is just so much fun and she seems like such a character that I want to pick up more of her stuff and yeah. I kind of dig the cover to this. It's very simple and it's called Side Effects May, may <laughs> Side Effects May Vary by Julie Murphy. The year she was meant to die became the year she started to live. Well, I feel like I've heard about this. I feel like sad things will happen in this book. I'm a baby. This one was on my uh, to reads list for, for forever. Uh, it is called The Murder Complex by Lindsay Cummings. I'm pretty sure this is a YA, but I'm okay with that. Uh, this one I'm pretty sure I picked up as a freebie and it is Stay With Me by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I don't know if this is like one in a series, so I'm not gonna read the back of that. The Dead Play On by Heather Graham. Ooh, a romantic suspense. Oh, hello face. Play a song for me. Musicians are being murdered in New Orleans. I know I say it weird, but Arnie Watson apparently died by his own hand when, okay, yeah, no, I'm not going to read the inside. I'm getting really tired. So romance has been, my battery's running low. I'm going to storm through the rest of this. I also picked up Molly McAdams's uh, Taking Chances, which has been recommended to me a lot. So I had to do it because I was there and she was there. And then I also picked up All Lined Up by Car Cora Carmack. She is such a sweetheart and she was also a blogger before she was a writer. And so it was just like, yes, we were late on that level. And she seems like such a fun person and I want to love her books because she's, yeah, just an awesome person. I also got Better When He's Bad by Jay Crownover. Oh, she looks so different on the back of the book than she does in real life. There's a difference between a bad boy and a boy who's bad. That's all I'm gonna read of that because I like the sound of that. I know that I have little ebook copy slip things for some books, but that's in my swag bag and that is a dangerous place to be. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through all the swag that I got just because there's so much of it. I think that would be like too long of a video. I, I did that for my NOLA thing, but shit, I got a lot of swag and I got a lot of bags too, which I love. And pins, pins are my favorite swag ever. But that is all that I picked up at RT, the rest of the things that I, I brought and that got signed. Can't talk anymore. English is not working. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I can't think anymore. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this and that it wasn't too, too long. I'm sure it is. But uh, leave any suggestions for videos that you want to see in the future from me down there in the comments. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I can't remember how I outro these things. I've been sitting up here for so long. <laughs> so I will see you guys later next time on Bookworm Stock. Bye.